Sammy was sensational. Matthews hit 60 and a surprise signing this weekend. We'll keep a key member of the Leafs around a little while longer. We'll get into all of that and more and tee up tonight's Leafs and Panthers game on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, the daily Maple Leaf Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. What's going on, Dave? Buona Pasqua. How was your Easter weekend, my friend? It was lovely. Spent some time with family, had some good food, some normal, normal Easter shenanigans. That's that's what it's all about. You know, you get to a certain age where it's just the holidays is just time for family and food. And uh, that's I'm in a food coma right now. I had a, a, a dinner with my cousin yesterday I had a nice little barbecue cookout. I don't know if you saw it on my Instagram. Boy, oh, it was so good. There was pork belly. There was uh what else did he have? Pork belly, sausage, turkey, uh, a brisket. Oh, it was unbelievable. Homemade mac and cheese. It was to die for. And that nice little ham dinner tonight with the family. So definitely got myself uh, my 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 Easter dinner fixings in this weekend. That's for sure. Uh, and the Leafs got themselves a win this weekend as well. Very nice to see. You know, it was a great game. Uh, Austin Matthews hit 60. Ilya Samsonov, boy, he's back. Like, he's back, back, back now. I mean, I, you know, it's taken a while for people to, to get back on board that train. But I think that win was a, a big statement win, considering what happened the last time he was in that building. If you ask him what happened, he, he doesn't give a bleep uh, what happened there. He made that very, very uh, firm uh, after the game. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Leafs with three nothing win against the Buffalo Sabers pick up two more points as they keep chugging along toward the end of the regular season. Here, what'd you make of the game, pal? I mean, for those who went to the game in Buffalo, you were treated like it was. You had everything happening in that game. You got the Matthews getting to sixty, Sammy putting on a tremendous performance. You had some some rough stuff at the end of the game there. Uh, Austin Matthews being assessed at 10 minute major for just being there. <laughs> um, yeah, that, literally. Hurt, well, uh, that might hurt it his sulky chances just a little bit. <laughs> you think it will? Maybe. No, maybe. it shouldn't. If it does, the Lady so Bing. Stupid. Maybe the Lady Bing. Oh, sorry, Lady Bing. Is, yeah, Lady Bing. That might have went out the window this past weekend. Uh, poor, poor Austin, if that's the case. Um, that was, yeah, I mean, that was, <laughs> I don't know what was going on with, like, was it McMahon and Tuck? Like, they were just, I don't know what they were doing. They were just kind of, like, hugging each other. It was like a like a, yeah. a, a an amateur wrestling match. They were just kind of grabbing onto each other but not actually doing anything. Um, I, I thought they might drop the gloves, but it, it didn't happen. Eventually, really, no one dropped the mitts. It was just a bunch of wrestling matches all over the ice. And then they basically said, all 10 players on the ice, you're out of here for the final couple of minutes of the game. Um, then they just kind of played out the the rest of the game there. But uh, why don't we go through the the three stars of the game? Because I feel like that's the best way to talk about it. Because, I mean, the, the stars really were, you know, the, the players that came up big. So uh, why don't we start? Let's start opposite. Because I really want to get to to Samsonov right away. Because he was the story. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to be any... Uh, surprise to anyone that I'm guessing I haven't talked to you about it, but I'm guessing Ilya Samsonov was also your first star tonight or on Saturday night. Like as good as the Leafs played, like Samsonov, like he stole the show in a lot of ways. Like the Sabers had their chances. Yeah, he got yeah. there were a few posts 
But when you're that when you're that good, sometimes luck is also on your side. And it, it was he was tracking the puck very well. He kind of he was anticipating things very well, making those extra efforts to get to you know make saves on shots. I don't even know how he made some of the saves. And so yeah, I mean, and the important thing about this wasn't just the fact that he had this performance, is he had this performance with the probably in the back of his mind that this was the game, this was the place that almost put his NHL career in jeopardy. Right. Like when you think about everyone's talking about the last time they were there, it was a nine three, he got pulled, he wasn't good, and it kind of the downward spiral because the Leafs didn't have trust in him. Now it's like probably one of the more underrated stories involving the Leafs this year is his turnaround to now being back to taking over, you know, basically putting all that behind him. Right. I know some people will maybe not be able to get over what happened before. And that, I mean, good luck to you. It's like, I think he's put that way behind him. I think whatever was bothering him before that's, that's past. He's, he's in such a groove right now that I don't even think like, He's even worried about that anymore. No, and, and he's not. Like he even after the game, like they asked him, you know, does does this one feel a little bit sweeter knowing what happened last time you were in the building? And and he's like, Oh, last time. He's like, What happened? Uh we gave up nine goals. And he's like, F that blank. <laughs> like that was a long time ago. I don't I don't care. Like, I don't remember. I a long time ago. I'm in a good place now. So um, you know, he and he is like, again, show me, don't tell me. Well, when you put on a a 34 save performance and you make a couple of, you know, a couple of 10 bell saves like you did tonight. Yeah. That show me he's in a different spot because last time he was in that building, every single shot muffin shot that was going towards him was going through him and into the back of the net. Not the case here tonight. I mean, that sequence, uh, he, he stops cousins. Like when they were killing on, on the shorthanded, he stops cousins on a breakaway. And then a couple of minutes later, you know, Skinner or a couple of seconds later, Skinner comes out on the ice after the penalty. He gets a shot. And then cousins, I thought, oh, there's the goal. Cousins gets absolutely robbed by Samson on the rebound. A beautiful glove stop there. And it keeps the game at two nothing. Right. Like that was kind of a critical point in that game. Matthew's able to get the third goal to kind of seal the deal, and uh, they're able to hang on and get Sammy that shutout. But you talk about him being in a groove. Since returning from his hiatus, it's now 20 games that he's played since coming back from uh, from being sent down to the minors and you know regrouping and coming back up. In those 20 games, he's 15-4-1 with a 2.43 goals against and a 9.14 save percentage. Um those are real. Those are like above average numbers, well above average numbers for a starting goaltender in the NHL this season. So Sam Snuff, since coming back, has given this team really, really solid goaltending. And I, I think at this point, with nine games to go, as long as he just continues playing at this pace, I think it's safe to now put this guy down as the starter for Game One. Like, I don't think Joseph Wall can win the job anymore. I think it's Sammy's to lose, and he would have to really crater in these final nine games for that to happen. But like you said, he's he's playing really well right now. He's in a groove, and I think that he could just ride this and continue it throughout the rest of the season and, you know, be penciled in as his team's go-to guy come game one of the playoffs. Yeah, at this rate, it's a good thing that they have this competition going on. Like, don't get – I know that some people are trying to pin off ah, – but I think still Joseph Wool or still Sam doesn't matter, guys. You have two goaltenders capable. There are teams right now that I don't even trust probably their goal, some of their goaltenders at this stage. You're right in there, yeah. Right, or they at least have a good problem. But the best thing is that I think this has pushed Sam's off to be the best version of himself that we haven't really we haven't seen, right? Take you know, it afforded him the depth that this team now has in that afforded him that time to get his head straight. Not many teams can afford their goaltender, their starting goaltender, that opportunity. And yeah, he's totally deserving. He's worked his way back. You mentioned, you know, what Sheldon Keith said after the game on Saturday, what Curtis Sanford had to say. That was by far his best effort, right? Like, I mean, it kind of game technically. So technically, technically. that was his best game um, in terms of you know what it's supposed 
supposed to look like. So the, the saves are one thing, made a couple of big saves, but technically from like a goalie one-on-one standpoint, he looked the best according to Curtis Sanford, which is a really encouraging thing to hear. It is. And that to me is when you're looking to make those decisions for game one of the playoffs, it's not just Sheldon Keith that makes that decision. It's the goaltending coach. It's the general man. They all kind of are making that decision together. So when you've got the goalie coach kind of coming out and saying that, it bodes really well for just a how hard Samsov has worked, but also how much faith they have in him to be that guy when game one comes around. Yeah, and uh, you know, just you look at the 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 numbers tonight. Stop thirty four of thirty four Saturday night. I keep saying that thirty four of thirty four. Uh, turned aside all nine high danger shots that he faces well, and uh, three point four one goals saved above expected. So the Buffalo Sabers, you know, generated a lot of chances, some high quality opportunities, but Ilya Samsonov turned him aside each and every time. Um, and that's, again, almost three and a half goals above expectation that he stopped tonight uh, en route to it was his third shutout of the season, I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, hats off to, to Ilya Samson off an incredible night uh, powering this team to, to victory. That's for sure. Uh, on the other side, we'll continue with our three stars with our second and third star. And well, I'm sure it won't be a surprise who pops up uh, on the other side. And uh, Simon Benoit signed an extension with the Maple Leafs over the weekend. We'll tell you about that. And we got another game tonight. Leafs and Panthers in Toronto. Leafs not too far from Florida in the standings now. Could they be creeping towards home ice advantage? We'll have that debate in a bit as well. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morris Studio. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. It is almost the playoffs, Leaf fans. And regardless of where we are in the standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Uh, all you have to do is pick whether studs like Crosby or McKinnon, Ovechkin, McDavid, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, whoever, will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats you heard me leaf fans you can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with sleepers so start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big use the promo code locked on nhl you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply that's code locked on nhl see sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We're a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast. We got new episodes coming out each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can find us wherever you find your audio podcast at or also uh, on YouTube. Just search up Locked On Leafs. We're still on our road to 5K subscribers. We're so close. We need like 100 and 120 more subscribers, something like that, to get to. 5k and once we do we're giving away a leaf jersey we want to get it done before the playoffs so that whoever wins this jersey one of the 5,000 subscribers uh can have it in their possession by the playoffs but in order to, to, to make that happen y'all gotta sub up i know there's about 40 percent of our listenership that has yet to subscribe to the podcast uh so go ahead sub now be a friend tell a friend about the lockdown lease podcast because uh, we're hoping for a, a decently long playoff run, perhaps, or at least an entertaining one, and we'll be right there uh, every step of the way with you guys. All right, let's continue, Dave. Actually, before we continue, I was at my nonna's place tonight, and she's living with my aunt, and she listens to the podcast every day, and she wanted me to make sure I said hello. Apparently, she listens, and she's really upset because she comments on the posts as well, on, on all of our YouTube posts, and, and she's like, you never say anything. Hello, Zia Maria. Hello. How are you? 
And she's going to hate Come and stay. Ah, come and stay, huh? All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, uh, back to the three stars of the game. So Ilya Samsonov, very clearly the number one star uh, Saturday night in the three nothing shutout over the Buffalo Sabres. The second star of the game, Mr. Morissuti. I have to go with uh, Austin Matthews. You have to give it to the guy who celebrates a milestone. S- only the ninth player to have 60 or more goals in a season. Like, that's crazy to think. You put the players that he's in that category right. with to do it twice. To do it twice. Like, it's unbelievable, you know, what he has accomplished. I think they also put out, like, how many play- like did like a comparison between him and Ovechkin at this point in their careers. And Matthews has 20 more goals than Ovechkin at this point in his career. Mm -hmm. And he had many chances to get to 60. And the way he does it is kind of not the way I expected Austin Matthews to get to 60. But still, I I have to give kudos to the Leafs fans that were there. And obviously, probably a lot of them were anticipating that moment to happen. And it kind of felt good yeah. to do it in their second. I call it their second home rink, although they invade a lot of home rinks that are within driving yeah. distance of Toronto. Yeah, they've got three, realistically. Ottawa, Buffalo, and obviously Toronto. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was loud. Their hats were thrown. Like there were People threw hats on the ice for the I've been there. Goal. I've been in that situation before. I know. Well, well I you did it for a hat trick. I mean, that's yeah. different. You did it for a hat trick. That, that was the Ryan O'Reilly hat trick game right last year yeah um if 60 goal to throw your hat i mean i guess you want to show your appreciation but i don't know it's, it seems a little a little unnecessary for that that the hat throw is uh is is for three goals in a game not 60 goals in a season but to each their own i suppose um but yeah he was he was great man and and, and you knew like the shift that he scored on he was determined to to get a goal on that shift. Like the way that he came down and the way that he shot the puck and then went after his own rebound and tried to bank it in from behind the net and then went straight to the goal and battled in front of the net and just kind of turned, found the loose puck and, and uh, scooped up the loose change and deposited into the back of the net. I mean, he was determined to make sure that he did not leave Buffalo that night without 60 goals uh, registered on the season. So uh, the determination when a guy like that, when he when he's at his best is is when he is like in I don't even know what to call it almost I don't want to call it like Superman mode, but where he is just extremely determined. I mean, for lack of a better word, I'll just use it again. And he's like, I'm going to score a goal. And when he gets it, when he gets like that, it, it, he's just he's so hard to stop because he can score in so many different ways. He's so dangerous and it's just going to happen like eventually it's going to happen and uh, eventually it did. Uh, he was, he was great though throughout the entire game. So uh, Austin Matthews certainly gets her second star of the game. Yeah. I mean, and, and also he's just like, if I'm not going to score with the defender without a stick, <laughs> like that's just, that, I think that whole play was just, you, you kind of just knew it was coming and yeah. like, I'm gonna I'll make give credit play. also to the fans behind the bench. Who all dressed in different letters for to spell out Matthews, and then somebody to have the sixty balloons. Like the whole thing was just it, it just all felt like it all came together nicely and perfectly for the for Matthews because he deserved it. Like he's the way he's been scoring this year. Like there's t- we've how many times we said this guy is just snap the finger hat trick, like nothing is is. 70 you think 70 still in his sights like what's he need 10 I, 10 more nine games that's even I if mean, he plays all nine like it's a good chance true. he gets maybe game 82 off potentially maybe or game 81 I, I, I don't know he would have to be at like 69 goals i think by game 82 in order to 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 play yeah. that one i suppose i don't know i i think 70 might be a little out of reach at this point um but I think 65 is very doable. And that would uh that, that would tie Ovi. Like Ovi got 65 the one year, right? Mm-hmm. So that would tie uh, Ovi's best at the very least. Yeah, I, I mean it, it, it's, it's essentially what like 
for Matthews, this isn't going to be his last chance to go after 70 either. No, it won't be. And it'd be one more than McDavid got last year. That Yeah, let's just make sure he gets more than McDavid. And yeah, Ovi had 65 back in yeah. his third season. So it's 07, 08. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Um yeah, dude, like the, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think 70 is probably not where the bar is now. I think it's probably moved down to 65. So can he get five goals over his next nine games? I think that's probably the, the, the new bar that we need to set for him. 70 seems a little bit outrageous at this point, I would think. Yeah. I mean, at the same point, He's not, I don't think he's as concerned. Like, would he love to get 70? Of course. Does he really need to well, worry about getting there? I don't think so. Well, that's 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 kind of what I what I'm wondering. Like, you can tell that at certain points of the last few games, they've gotten to, you know, a, a, a certain point in the game where they're like, okay, let's get let's get Austin a goal. And they start mm-hmm. force feeding him pucks and he just starts shooting everything on net. Yeah. Like, do you think we still see that moving forward? Or now that he's hit 60. You know, that's that was the goal. That was the number that they wanted to hit. Now they can just kind of go and play hockey again. Like, that's kind of what I'm wondering what we're going to see out of Austin. Or are they still going to force him the pucks so that they could see, all right, well, how high can he go? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's that's going to be tough to. They got like strong, like tough games coming up. Like, they got the Panthers coming up, they got the Lightning. Yeah, they know those teams know what Matthews is going for. I think forcing him to get those goals might be a little tough. But when Mitch Marner comes back in the lineup, that's going to be a totally different story <laughs> because Mitch Which is just going to be. Hopefully is is sooner rather than uh, rather than later. Yeah. Uh, really quick to round out the three stars. I think I'm I'm giving it to the penalty kill. I mean, six, mm-hmm. six for six on the penalty kill. You know, this was a, a unit that had been struggling the last few weeks here and, and, you know, the last couple of games, they've seemed to finally find a groove, found a groove here and going six for six. You saw some tremendous shot blocking um, and your best penalty killer is your goaltender. And we talked about how terrific Sam Snob was all night. A couple of those uh, big saves he made was on the power play. So uh, for me, uh, the penalty kill has not gotten a lot of love lately, but when you go six for six uh, in a victory, I think it, it deserves some love. So we'll, we'll give the PK a third star in this one. Yeah, I'm glad you did. I I was, if you didn't mention it, I was going to, but now that you mentioned it, I'm going to go with my uh, second option. That's John Tavares. Mr. 1100. Mr. 1100 gets the goal. Like, great shot. Remember when this guy couldn't score at five on five? Yeah, I know. It's like both him, him and Bertuzzi at the same time. It just they were so yeah. snake bitten, and now that they're scoring, it's like okay, there's quite a bit of depth scoring outside of like Matthews and Nylander when other guys are scoring when they're not snake bitten, and it, it just it just looks better for the Leafs. Yeah, it just looks so much better. Uh, you get one from Nick Robertson as well. Nice little shot along. Do you see what he said after the game? By the way. I didn't see what he said, actually. So I guess someone asked him about, you know, well, what did you see on that on your goal, right? It was a, a breakaway goal, and he just took a shot. It was five hole, but just went along the ice. Mm-hmm. And he said it was that's something that he had learned from his brother. So his brother kind of, yeah, something he took mm-hmm. from his brother, who kind of was he was working on, you know, some shooting tactics, I guess, with them. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this was over the summer, uh, and I oh. guess he he almost he healed it. So he he shot it with his heel, knowing that it wouldn't get any lift. So he purposely did that so it would stay along the ice so he could go five hole and not lift it at all so that the goalie would have had to go all the way down to make the save. Obviously, Ukopekalukana did not and ended up going in. So mm-hmm. it was purposely done. Uh, and and I think it was, you know, if if he's starting to pick up some some tips and tricks from his his brother when it comes to to scoring goals and he's, he's executing it in the way that Jason's been doing it throughout his career. That's a good sign for the Maple Leafs, by the way, good sign Very for the good. Leafs. That's just a little PS, uh, little, uh, little note that I also picked up on from the post game audio session. 
All right, let's take a break. Let's come back. Let's get into Simon Benoit's new deal, and we'll help tee up uh, game 70. We got 74, 70. Yeah, game 74, I believe, on the year. Leafs and Florida back at Scotiabank Arena. So we get into all of that and more on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the big tournament, MLB, NBA, of course, NHL, and so much more. If you're feeling confident tonight, Leafs in Florida, there's tons of wagers that you can make on this game. Place down a $5 bet. If it wins, you'll get yourself $200 in bonus bets. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Uh, Simon Benoit, we weren't really expecting an extension from him uh, mid-season, but here we are. We woke up to an extension the other day because it was like a mid-afternoon signing, I suppose. But uh, a three-year deal for the 25-year-old, uh, $1.35 million AAV. What did you think? What was your first initial reaction when you saw the Benoit extension, Dave? Well, obviously, surprise. Just kind of kind of came out of nowhere. No, the Leafs are still in that like bound like secrecy where things like that don't leak and it seems like brad true living really likes 1.35 that's three yeah. deals he has signed that have all been at 1.35 a year Reeves? was that the same was mcmahon's also three yeah mcmahon's also was 3.5 obviously brian reeves yeah like <laughs> it's just kind of funny how that kind of all works out but like to get the three years that i think is the key part because you have to remember, Simon Benoit is not a guy in like his late tw- late twenties. He's in his mid twenties. He's twenty five. Like you're getting your the best years, even better years of Simon Benoit. I was listening to like Kipper and Bourne, and they said like, as a defensive like Benoit, physical defense that gets older and you know kind of rounds up more physically. That's when you get the best years out of him. And I feel like the Leafs did tidy work to get that done because we know that after this year, don't have a lot of defensemen signed. So they're kind of getting the, the groundwork done on that. And his is an easy one. He's an R, you know, he was an RFA. So he they have had a little bit of leverage there. You throw out three years, that's security for Benoit. He's he's gonna sign that any day. I know that some guys will try to go and reach free agency, but the position he was in, he wasn't even sure if he was gonna be playing in the NHL this year. Now he just got himself yeah. a nice tidy deal. He started he started out in the American League. Like yeah, he started out yeah. in, in the AHL. He went through waivers unclaimed and was in the American League. Wasn't making NHL uh, you know, NHL dough. But uh obviously he's he's been great this year. His game took a a big leap forward this year. And if you look at the numbers, like offensively, okay, he's not giving you a whole lot. And I think we all understand. Uh, that he's not going to like that's just not who he is but he's got whatever five points through 55 games but he's got 194 hits uh he's got 84 blocks and he's won 51 percent of his numbers and has a team best uh 2.32 expected goals against per 60 and he's played a lot of tough minutes like for a majority Mm -hmm. of the season he's played alongside jake mccabe and those two have been kind of the de facto shutdown pairing And they've been terrific. They've been great. They've won 54% of their minutes together. Uh, So, you know, worst case scenario, you're looking at an an ideal third pair defenseman uh, who who can defend, who can, you know, who's very hard to play against. He can kill penalties. You know what you got. And it's a perfect cap hit for a third pair guy. You know, you, you, you love to see it. And you know that there's slight upside there as well. Like you said, he's only 25. Right. Defensemen take a little bit longer to develop when it comes to, uh, you know, I I would say forwards develop the quickest then defensemen, then goalies. He's taken this leap from age 24 to age 25. There's still 
a possibility that from 25 to 26, 26 to 27, 27 to 28, that's how long this contract lasts till the end of his 28 year old season. There is definitely some room for growth here, right? So you could be getting an even better defenseman at some point uh, for the Maple Leafs, but worst case scenario, you love this deal as your third pair guy who could kill penalties and his, who's going to be uh, a very physical defenseman. So I thought it was a really good deal, good timing too for uh, for for Brad Tree Living. I think both sides are going to be happy with it. One point three five isn't going to kill you. Uh, and worst again, worst case scenario, you could bury a majority of that contract if he ter- if he ends up being unplayable. You can bury, you know, uh, was a one point one five million, one point two five in the minors. And therefore, you only you know got a couple hundred thousand that you gotta that you gotta pay. So, I thought this was a no brainer deal. Uh, and according to Evolving Hockey, I saw a, a graphic. His value this season has been about one point six million. So you're still getting a bargain at one point three five. If he just yeah. is what he's been this year, if he could just copy and paste this year after year, you're getting a bargain at one three five. Especially with the cap going up, uh, you know you're gonna get even better of a bargain there. So uh, three more years of Simone Benoit with the Maple Leafs. All right. Big game tonight. Leafs Panthers could be a, a playoff preview. Potentially if, if the season were to end today, it would be Leafs versus Panthers. Um, they're only six points back of Florida and they have a game in hand. If they win this game, I mean, it's four points out with one game in hand. Like this, these games against Florida could re- like if they win both of the net of the two games remaining against the Panthers. I don't know, man. There's a strong possibility that at least could end up with home ice advantage. Very much like the the Panthers opened up this this kind of window here. Like two things on that. Like Maurice yelled, like he went on another tirade apparently in the locker room on the Panthers pretty much a year to the day that he did the same thing against the Panthers against the Leafs and they like turned their season around but like the Panthers have not been playing well lately they're four five and one in the last 10 they were looking like they were going to take the Atlantic division or like them and the Bruins are still technically obviously going back and forth on that but like the Bruins have kind of taken that advantage there and if you're the Leafs I know we talked about them playing better away, but at the same time, there's always that comfort of being on home ice and gives you a little more to play for. The Leafs missed that chance against Boston in those two games they played earlier. They do the same against the Panthers. I don't know how that's going to feel for their confidence or even just (laughs) everyone's confidence. Like It's one thing, okay, the Bruins played really well. The Leafs played really bad. The Leafs have also been banged up. Let's see if they can kind of reverse the trend a little bit here and, and give the fans a little more belief that they can beat one of those playoff opponents. So we did not hear who the starter was going to be in this game. Um, I would think you go back to Samson off, n- not only because he's coming off a shutout, but whoever you at this time believe has the edge in this goalie battle which could be against the Panthers, I think should get this game. So for me, that would be Samsonov. I think that's how I would look at it if I were uh, the goaltending committee here for Toronto. I'd, I'd be looking at, all right, the playoffs started today. Who's our guy? Who's gonna? Who's our goalie? Who has the edge in this battle right now? And that's who I'd start. So I, I, I personally would go Samsonov over Wall tonight. Well, and I think Samsonov deserves to get the net back. Like, <laughs> you got a guy had a shutout. <laughs> what more can you ask of him? No, oh, for I sure. It, like, and, and look, there's a there's a couple. There's gonna be back to backs. You can even put Wall against the Lightning. That's still a playoff caliber opponent. If you want to really test them there as well, I have no issue if they go back with Samson. I think that's probably where they lean. If you want to see how he bounces back from a game like this and get him again a rhythm because he had missed a few. You know, he hadn't played a few games, right? So 
you kind of get him back and going here a little bit as well. And I mean, the Panthers, they've lost six of their last eight games, so they're not playing their best hockey. They are coming off a win. They beat the the uh, the Red Wings um, the other night in overtime. So they are, you know, they, they got finally got a win there. But I mean, they have not been playing very well. So hopefully Toronto can try and take advantage of, uh, of a Panther squad. I know Ekblad is back. Ekblad was out for a majority of that eight-game stretch mm-hmm. where they struggled. Now with him back in the fold, it's a little bit of a different situation, obviously. But again, like if if you know, <laughs> you want to kind of send a you know make a make a statement, right? Like especially on home ice, um, I would think you want to make a statement here. If this is a team you're going to be playing three weeks from now, uh, I would try and you know let them know, hey, this isn't the same Leafs team that you beat you know, earlier in the year, or this is the same Leafs team that you beat down in five games last year in the playoffs. You know, we're, we're here. We're willing to play Mm -hmm. a much more physical and hard nosed game. It's going to be a lot tougher to beat us than it was prior and let them know now, uh, you know, just let they know going into the playoffs. No, exactly. You you do want, you, you want to be able to put your best foot forward against these sort of teams. It gives you confidence. Like the good thing about the the Sabres one. Yeah, the Sabres are out of it. But the important thing, and you mentioned your three stars was getting that penalty kill. Like That's a step forward for that penalty kill to say, well, we implemented. Apparently, they implemented some new stuff. Would have been nice if they implemented that like 50 games ago. But we'll digress on that one. Um, But that confidence to say, all right, we went. We had a big night on the penalty kill. Let's carry that forward. Same thing against the Panthers. This is a team that, let's say, put it out mildly, they embarrassed you in the second round last year. They took your lunch money. Send a little bit of a message to say, second time around, you're not going to bully us like you did. Even like the game against the Sabres, at the end there, you know, Brody gets Brody gets checked from behind. Zio Gio gets the boys rallied up, and they all go out, and they go and defend their teammate. They weren't doing that against the Panthers last year. The Panthers had their way physically. I think the Leafs needed that's I think the tone that they need to set. You're not yeah. going to intimidate us physically. You're going to have to actually beat us rather than us beat ourselves. Yeah. I'm curious if we'll see Mitch Marner get into this game or not. I I don't think he was ruled out. I don't know if he's ready to get activated or not. Because he's not he's missed 10 games now, right? He has, and because I remember when when they did put him on LTIR, Elliot oh, Freeman. You know, you know what? It's ten games and twenty four days, so it has yeah. not been twenty four days yet. So, because uh, he was out on what the seventh, March seventh. So I think he's eligible to come back on Wednesdays. I think that's what Elliot Freeman had. Okay, so Wednesday he, he might be actually. Sorry, no. He so it, he, on March thirtieth. It was a cap move eligible to come off tomorrow. So actually, the yesterday would have been like the. Yeah, I was going to say because he was on the seventh, right? Yeah. Is is when he yeah. was retroactive. That's when they're retroactive. Yeah. So twenty four days would be the thirty first. Yeah. So yesterday would have been it. So he could he could be good to go. He could be good to go if he's. He healthy. did practice. That was he's the big one. For a couple of days. He's practiced a couple of days now mm-hmm. in a row. Like he practiced what. Uh, Thursday in the morning skate and then he practiced Friday as well so there's a couple of practices with the team I don't know we'll see we'll see if he's ready to go uh, with that ankle I I want him to get a few games in here I don't want him to you know be rusty going into the playoffs I think it'd be ideal for Marner to try and get in you know eight or nine games uh, to to get back up to speed especially coming off an ankle injury where you haven't been able to, to go you know pedal to the metal with that type of injury, especially when it comes to skating. And, you know, that's one of his big, you know, attributes. So uh, Mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, he gets, he gets in the lineup sooner rather than later. I said something we'll be watching for uh, later today. Uh, Any other final comments you want to make Dave, before we get out of here for the day? No, I think uh, let's see what they can do against the Panthers. It's, I, I it kind of caught me off guard a little bit because I didn't realize they had a game on Monday. Monday games are just so rare now; you don't really see the Leafs play a lot of Monday games. I so. know. 
right, but right back to it. I was, let's see home ice. I, let's get some home ice. Uh, get some nice wins on home ice. That's a yes. important thing too, especially against this team. Especially yeah, against the Panthers. Should be a good one. Should be a fun one. Uh, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms, including up on YouTube. Uh, follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morisuti. Follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow to recap tonight's Leafs versus Panthers game. Go, Leafs, go. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.